group. And this is episode 348. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Bay Ragmi. And I just want to say welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. Wow, 348. You're getting up there, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think the last time, and for people who want to see our interview, I think it was somewhere in like in the hundreds, right hundreds. I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. I know I had to redo the number order, but last time we talked was about 2005. I mean, no, that's about 2015. Yeah, I'm going to say it's been at least a year because when I uh, when I logged back onto my Skype here, because you're the only person I use Skype with, so it said you haven't been on in over a year. I was like, wow. Uh, so it's been a while. Yeah, well, one year follow up. <laughs> But it's great to see you again. It looks like you're in good health. Trying, trying. You know, every day is a new, uh, a new can of worms. But you know, you just keep moving on. No, absolutely. I saw your video yesterday with you and the Oreos. It was really funny. Uh, thank you, thank you. Have you tried them yet? Um, I tried the strawberry ones, and I tried. Okay. Let's see, the normal strawberry. And I think I did. I don't remember. But yeah, they're coming ones. out with they're coming out with so many different flavored Oreos now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> now, for people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a word and disability, I can still overcome controversy and reach my goals in life. At the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of word and disabilities and disabilities but you should never give up and you should prove to people you can still mount to something but labels do not dictate who you are and who you going to be it is approved to them you can break the labels so that being said half hour 45 minutes every time you have as much time as you like and for people who want to watch our first interview just go to my history on YouTube and there you go, you know, key fans in our work, watch season one, two, three, and four, and you can watch all my runs up to 400. With that being said, you know the drill, normal conversation, freedom of speech, freedom of self-expression. And the first question I was going to ask you is jumping into the ECW history, was number one, who were some of your favorite, in the, off the record, who were some of your favorite people to work with, and who did Well, you technically, meet? this is on the record. Oh, well. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't mind me. I don't do my interviews at early in the morning. <laughs> but who were some of your favorite people you worked with, and who were some of you hated? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Who did I... Let, let's start with the negative first. Who did I hate? <laughs> That's a good question because you know what? It takes a lot for me to actually hate somebody. And that was, uh, you know, the, the days of ECW for myself was, um, you know, it was 20, you know, 20 plus years ago, 21, 22 years ago. Um, and I can't say that I actually, and, and this is being honest, it's no BS. Um, I can't say I actually hated anybody. It, it, at least nobody in ECW. I mean, there was people in the wrestling business that I came across that I I I, I hated. I just didn't I didn't like them. I you know I didn't like what they did or what they stood for or you know how they were in the business. But there was nobody in ECW because at the time in ECW, I mean, I was. I was 25, 26 years old. I had been in the wrestling business at that point um, three, four years. And I consider myself definitely in that locker room, you know, one of the young boys, one of the young bucks. And so it was always a learning experience every time. It was like literally going to, um, you know, in the wrestling business, you go to wrestling school. When you would go to these shows, it was like basically going to wrestling school and sitting and having um, a live interactive wrestling class where you got to, um, you know, do your pre-show stuff where you're preparing for the show and getting ready and preparing for the match. And, 
your the uh, your environment of that locker room was so um, just so impre impressive. Um, being a person who grew up watching and loving wrestling and seeing all your heroes in that dressing room and people who influenced to get you into the business and made you want to, um, you know, put the boots on and get in that ring. And then you're in a locker room with them and you're interacting with them. You're learning from them. You're possibly getting the chance to, to get in the ring with them and work angles or matches with them. Um, and then even once you get to that point after the match where you're sitting around and you're watching the rest of the show and what's going on on the rest of the show and you're seeing the interactions of all the uh, the other workers and um, the fans and the, the behind the scenes. It, it was just constant. It, it was constant wrestling school. I mean, that's the best way to describe it. And I truly loved every minute of it. I was so appreciative of every minute of it. And I would always walk out of there um, no matter how small my part was, because my parts were small, um, very jazzed, you know, very psyched and excited because seeing what was going on, um, whether when it was our turn to be out there on that side of the curtain or when we were behind the curtain, seeing what was, what else was going on, um, you knew it was special and you knew you were a part of, I mean, the way I kept looking at it was I was part of wrestling history and 20 something years later for people to still know or care about the, you know, the little things I did there. Um, it, it kind of shocks and surprised me. It really does. No, absolutely. Now, do you have any funny, you mentioned in the first interview, how you got your start. Would you like to tell any funny stories like you did from the first time? From from which point? Oh, you mentioned uh, what Paul Heyman said. None of ever freaking Dudley. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. When when I uh, when I first got in with the Dudleys, um, yeah. What had happened was I had uh, uh, here in the Philadelphia area. There was a lot of people after the uh, the shows, whether it was the indie shows in the area or um, WWF at the time or WWE or WCW would come to town, a lot of the, a lot of the fans, uh, as they became to be known as the Smart Marks, um, would go and hang out at the local Philadelphia Marriott, which was the hotel a lot of the, uh, a lot of the boys would stay at after the shows. So it became like the party house, uh, the party hotel where, you know, everybody would meet up at the bar afterwards and start drinking and hanging out and you would end up talking wrestling for hours. And, and it was great because especially at that time where there was no real internet yet, um, it was hard to, you know, in your everyday life, not everybody's a wrestling fan. Um, so you didn't get to like talk wrestling with people a lot. So when, uh, when you would have the opportunities for whether I, it was, like I said, WWE, WCW, or whoever it was at the time, um, to meet up afterwards, a lot of friendships were made with a lot of the people who were the smart marks. And um, at that time, it was very early in my career. I was on the indie circuit for you know two or three years at that point, and um, I had gone through wrestling school with Stevie Richards, and he had already uh, gone back to ECW at that point. He was with Raven, and they had just started the whole Dudley gimmick and. Looking at seeing the Dudleys on TV, it was kind of weird because it was like looking in a mirror where, you know, as you see, I wear glasses. Um, I used to have real long hair like the Dudleys. And um, I looked just like a spitting image of a Dudley. And it was kind of weird. And, and Richards had said to me, he said, yeah, why don't you come, you know, when you come into the hotel after the show tonight, come hang out. And uh, if Paul's around, I'll introduce you to Paul. I was like, all right. And, uh, that's basically what happened. Now, Paul took one look at me and was just like, holy shit, another fucking Dudley. <laughs> you have a tie-dye shirt? And I'm like, no, because secretly, I hate tie-dye. I was just 
tie dyes always stood for like Grateful Dead, and I was never a Grateful Dead fan, so it uh, it, it, you know, I had to go out and buy a tie dye and um, show up the next week. And the, the, our first week was um, well, my first week was we were working against uh, the Steiner Brothers. And the Steiners at that time were one of the biggest, if not the biggest, tag team in wrestling. And um, were a huge influence on me getting in the business. I was a huge fan of uh, Rick Steiner because Rick Steiner was a shorter guy like myself and stocky. And you know, he was over like 5'10", 5'11". And I thought, well, you know, dog face gremlin can do this. You know, I can take, uh, take a cue from him and get in there and be just like him. So... It, it was a definite honor to be uh, in that squared circle with them guys and, you know, locker room and just, it, it was huge. It was a huge thing. No, absolutely. You did bring up a couple of good subjects, but you're not the first one to say um, fans know where wrestlers are. Because I interviewed someone else, he was a limo driver, and he said, I can't really say much, but I don't want to say where wrestlers hang out. Basically, he's a mm -hmm. Wimble driver for the WWE. Okay. Oh, he, he was. I haven't talked to him uh, as a white. But for people who want to know, what are smart marks, and how do you guys know where you're going to stay? For an example, I would like to hang out with you guys when you're at a hotel, but I'm not a stalker. <laughs> so how exactly do you know where they're going to stay? And that's exactly what I said to the Wimble driver. You know, I have a wife. I'm not going to be like, oh, Mickey James, blah, 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 blah. Oh, she's going to be at the Marriott. It's like, well, how the hell is that going to put a roof over your head? And you have a little too much free time over your head, hands. But it's kind of like, anyway. <laughs> so what is the smart mark and how do you guys know without GPS in the person? How do you know you got to stay? <laughs> Um, smart Mark. Smart Mark is uh, a smart wrestling fan. Uh, in the business, uh, you're taught as a wrestler to, I mean, the fans are marks. And it's an old, old term where you're basically, when you're in that ring, and probably a lot of people don't notice, I don't know if it was ever truly explained. Yeah, I'm sure some people explained it, but um, when you're in the ring, and especially when you're a heel, you're playing to the crowd. You have four sides of the ring, so you got to find, you got to play to them four sides. You got to go through that crowd, and you got to pick your marks. You know what I mean? And the mark, and a mark is a person. It turns out okay. to be a person. So you got to pick your mark on who you're going to play to, to where you're going to get that, the biggest amount of a. If you're a heel, the biggest amount of heat off of, or if you're a face. The biggest pop you're going to get from. So you got to pick your mark. Now the smart mark is going to be the the mark that you don't even have to pick. They're just the ones that are in the know. They they're very smart to the business. They understand the workings of the business. They probably know more about the business than a lot of the guys, including myself, inside that ring. Um, and they know the whereabouts of what's going on. They they know. The who's, ifs, whans, buts, etc. And a lot of that happens just by forming um, when you're going to these shows. When you're going out to shows, forming friendships and bonds with um, other local fans. And it ends up building a community. And uh, I, I truly think Philadelphia was probably definitely the, the area and the birth of the smart mark. Thanks to ECW, and um, the, the the wrestling fan base was uh, a huge uh, it was a thing. A huge thing isn't even a, a a nice thing to say because it was more than a thing. It was uh, it was a family. It truly was, and a lot of the smart marks here in the Philadelphia area, um, I became very good friends with. And not only myself as a worker in the wrestling business, but tons of other workers in the wrestling business have become very close friends with these smart marks. And it, it I, I think it was a good thing. Early on, 
and especially a lot of the older guys in the business felt it was not a good thing um, because it was helping expose the business. But it also, in my eyes, it helped build the business and helped flourish everything involved in the world of wrestling. No, absolutely. Now, can you give us a perfect example? Like, use me for an example. I'm in the audience and you're in the ring. Okay. So how do you know if you're being, uh, if you're doing a work or you're just being a dick? <laughs> and how do you tell the difference? Wait, how, do, how do you know if you're what? Um, if you're just uh, being a dick or you're just uh, doing a work. Do you mean the this worker or the mark? Well, both. Uh, well, I, I mean the worker, you got to realize he's doing his job. So it, 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 it's no matter what it is, it's a work. So he's, he's working the crowd as a worker. Um, that's where the whole term comes from. And it also, it is their job and they're working. So um, a lot of the workers too, they could be, um, just because they are the heel, they could be playing that heel roll up. They could be, um, they truly could be a dick. You know, it happens. Um, or some people can be the biggest dick uh, in their role, in their persona, but could be the nicest guy walking the earth. So, you know, it matters how good of a worker they are, how good of a person they are. As for the, uh, the marks, it's kind of the same thing. Like uh, the marks ended up, they have their job to do too where their job is to either, you know, cheer or boo uh, whoever they like or love. And there's going to be times where a lot of those those marks are dicks, and they take it too far, and that's... <laughs> when I look at something like that, and I see, like, something gets taken too far by a fan, or, yeah. um, I kind of laugh inside because... That means that worker really took it to the that level to really bring something out in somebody that probably wasn't expecting to happen. So, there, but there's 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 good and bad. There dicks, there's dicks and uh, there's assholes and there's nice people on both sides of the the ring. No, absolutely. Now, the last question I was going to ask you, when we're going to take come also break is who were some of your favorite people? You know, I got a chance to interview uh, Justin Credible. Mm -hmm. He's a nice guy. I interviewed him and his daughter. Oh, nice. Um, I'm trying to catch up with Angel. We did a demo interview. Okay. Um, let's see. I interviewed CW, CW Anders. Uh, don't mind me. That's, that's my watch. It's really annoying. <laughs> uh, I interviewed CW is a super super nice guy. Was one uh, CW Anderson? Eh, we didn't really. We kind of butt heads. Oh really? He had um, when I was promoting shows. He um, he came in ECW after I had already left. Um, when I was promoting shows, um, he had worked a few shows for me. He was class act for me, so no complaints for me. I give you a damn. Uh, and so I'm gonna out myself. I rub people the wrong way, <laughs> not deliberately. It's just my mannerisms and disability. And I apologize to him too. He he still wants nothing to do with me. Basically, we did an interview and it was really good. And but as you saw and a fan see from my early work, you just saw the person. Now it's cut in half. You gotta see me and you gotta see you. So I have to get great into my format. At the time, it was just basically, you know, what you saw on the screen, that's what you saw. So, thank God I updated my format. And I said to him, oh, like a couple weeks later, a month later, hey, could we do a, um, I know we did an interview, but I updated my format. And I really, you know, I'd like to have you as a friend, so I was talk more just as friends. And I don't know what the hell his problem is, but he he ripped into me. He says, you ask the same goddamn fucking questions as everyone else. I'm like, okay, tell me about your career. Oh, my God. Yeah, I heard that already. Okay. Did you like working with, oh, my God, I heard that already. Yeah, okay. Did you work in retail? Oh, my God, I heard that already. And I you know, I kept back to him. He kept throwing it back at me. And he kept ripping into me. 
I said, you know what? I'm done with you. And I guess I kind of made a mistake. I went to his wife and I said, I don't know what, what, what his problem is. And I didn't deserve that. You know, I'm handicapped. I'm retarded. I have a disability. I didn't, I don't deserve to be ripped into. She blocked me. And a couple of weeks later, um, earlier actually, before I messaged you, I came out and I said, you know, hey, we had a misunderstanding. You know, I do have a disability. I rub people in a long way. So if I disrespect you, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. And I'm being completely honest. And he said, no. And I was like, okay, you know, I tried. I made a mistake. But, you know, just some people I talk to are really nice. You know, um, just incredible. Angel. On uh, you. And there's some other people who are just assholes. And it's kind of like... I don't know. Well, he, he, here's the one thing uh, from you telling me that story. And I, and I can't remember you telling me that um, we talked, maybe it was initially or... At one point, when we did one of these interviews, um, you you do have a learning disability. You made it very clear. Me talking to you, if if you didn't tell me, I would never would have known. First off, and I'm being honest, um, you're probably smarter than me. You probably learn a lot better than me. Um, but I never would have known you have a learning disability. Second off. Not everybody you're going to interview, yeah. you're going to become friends with. You you got to kind of know the bounds. You know what I mean? Like, I you might have caught Chris at a bad time. I, I don't know. But you have to let it happen naturally. Don't, like, turn around and say, hey, I, I want to, you know, build this into a friendship. Just let it happen naturally. Hey, just start talking to them casually. Yeah. Um, or, or whoever. You just, like, I, I mean, I've interviewed probably seven, eight, nine hundred people, and I, I have, like, in my phone, like, you go through my phone and you see some of the people's names and numbers in there, and you're like, holy shit. I, I look at it sometimes and I'm like, holy shit. Like, how'd that happen? But I don't sit there and reach out to them. Like, a lot of times these people come to town, I don't say, hey, you want to catch up or whatever. You know, if they have my name and number two, and if they want to build something, I, I kind of let them do it. Right. Because people are busy. People are, are super busy. Again, I don't know what Chris's situation is. I don't know. I mean, I haven't talked to Chris in years. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. But that's just my observation. And don't use yourself. Don't sell yourself short because you 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 don't come, like I said you don't come off at all with a person with a learning disability. So you should be really proud of what you do, what you've accomplished, and how you conduct yourself in these interviews. No, absolutely. I didn't mean to complain to you. And if CW wants to be on the show, you know, he's more than welcome to. And you know, I think one of my problems is because. I um <laughs> I walk around with some of my emotions on my sleeve, but I'm always you give me respect, I give you respect, and I'm sure I'm glad we became friends. And one reason I'm doing the show is to work on myself, to get myself out there, and mm -hmm. it's supporting the cause. And you're making a new friend out of it. How sure. those people? Yes, I do slowly becoming friends with, and some of them keep me on a on a leash, and it's. You know, basically, I'm just showing people I'm a good person, and you got to accept me for who I am, or you're not. And so, like, you know, you, exactly. can, you can't win everyone. But with that being said, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back with the last eight minutes, I'm going to pass the show over to you. A message for yourself, or as a gift for someone else. For personal connections, shout-outs, birthdays, proposals, weddings, and much more. Enter your details about yourself so the celebrity can record a personal video message, especially for you, including details such as your name, age, birthday, hobbies, or whatever else you include. As soon as the video has been recorded, you'll get an email with your link so you can share it on social media or download and keep it. Celebrities record videos as and when they can, usually within two weeks. But if you want a video for a specific date and it does not look like it will arrive in time, 
You can cancel it and get an instant refund at the click of a button. There are hundreds of celebrities to choose from and many more joining every day. Search by category or genre. Buy a gift voucher, get updates and offers, and encourage your favorite celebrities to join so they can connect with fans in a fun and unique way. Raise money for their charities and much more. So order your video now for yourself or for someone else. I'm so bored. Yeah! Wanna see something really cool? Yeah! Now you'll never be bored again with Loot Crate, a totally bodacious mystery box packed with awesome toys, radical games, and other surprises. And the best part is, you can get Loot Crate delivered right to your door. So don't delay. Ask your parents and order today. Everything okay in there? Yeah. Everything great. <laughs> I love Liquid. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 348. I'm here as a good friend of mine, Bay Ragney, and I just want to say thank you for joining us once again and not getting sick of me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me back. It's always a pleasure, Keith. Now I'm gonna pass the show over to you. And now you have mentioned one question off the air, but I do want to mention. As sponsors, so when you look at my season two, season three, I used to do sponsors on the air. You know, I do have a couple of affiliations with uh, Wu Kui, uh Target. I really don't do much with anymore, but I am affiliated with them. And what I'm going to ask you uh, before I get to the question is now I do want to do want to do a break. I like Bark Box, so mm -hmm. when beginning my videos, Bark Box shows up. I like dogs. So now I'm also on Celeb VM, and you should be on that. Celeb VM is basically for actors, actresses, and models. Basically, you say, hey, Bay, I came across your page, and um, for, I don't know, 20 $30, how much you want, people will pay you. And you say, for an example, I'm a big fan of yours. Can you give me a shout-out? Can you give me a recommendation? And so it's basically your way of interacting with the fans, and you're making money on the side. I'm on there as well. Okay. So I send you the link to that. And on Wukoites, you know, I'm in affiliation with that. But the question is, what's the difference? Last question, and I'll pass it to you. I promise. Then I will shut up. <laughs> you can ask any question. Go ahead. Uh, what's the difference between a sponsor and an affiliation? Uh, affiliation is I'm affiliated with... Clorox. A sponsor is Clorox is paying me to say this. Ah. So that's that's the difference. So affiliations are free. Pretty much. All right. So because I signed up and I was like, I'm promoting them, but they're not promoting me. It's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and and which one's that for? Uh, I sign up to Target, Wukwaits, Celeb VM. And that's really about it. Target, Wukwait, and so at the end. Well, you know what? We'll have to talk about that off air at some point. And send me over what you signed up to do, and let me uh, let me see about it. I, I think, yeah, let me send me over the things that you signed up for. Let me see what they're about. All right. Now I'm gonna pass the show over to you. Was there anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to promote? This is your time, after all. Uh, well, the big thing I've been doing for the past, uh, it's actually we just celebrated our fifth anniversary, is um, Totally Driven Entertainment. I started uh, Totally Driven Entertainment five years ago. It started as a entertainment website. And uh, six months into that, we, we, uh, we started doing a weekly podcast, which is entertainment-based. We talk... We started out just talking uh, sports and entertainment, and then we started going into celebrity interviews, and we're live every Thursday night. Um, you, we usually do one, two, or three celebrity interviews on top of you know myself and my co-hosts, Nick Wilkinson and Jimmy Gennetti. We have our, um, our discussions in the world of entertainment, and um, after a year of doing a show, we actually branched out and started our own online uh, podcast network, which we have. We have about ten shows on the network now. We have shows that range from 
uh, sports talk to wrestling to um, we have a show just joined the network a couple weeks ago that's like a history show. Uh, and the person talks about stuff with history and things like that. It's, re it's a really interesting show. So, I mean, uh, we have music. We have all different types of uh, worlds of entertainment we cover on our network. And it's the Totally Driven Entertainment Radio Network. Um, and something I really wanted to uh, branch out into was doing, like, concert promotions and things like that, like entertainment events. And... In 2016, I started laying the groundwork for that, and we just started uh, a couple months ago. We started doing that as well, where we did um, done a couple shows this year. We did um, did our first show in March. We had a show a month ago. Actually, exactly a month ago today was our second show. We have three shows lined up for the summer. We got a show coming up uh, June 25th. is an all ages rock show. At the, uh, the the Rusty Nail in Ardmore, Pennsylvania, uh, it's featuring four bands. It's the, uh, the four bands are Peridian, the Disapproved, uh, Echo Heart, and For the Fire. And then the next show after that is July seventh at the Whiskey Tango in Philadelphia, uh, which we're going to have um, from season ten of The Voice, Gina Zell. Uh We're also going to have uh, Kriegara, who uh, used to be known as Kennedy Noel. Uh, she uh, she played piano with Kelly Clarkson on the Grammys quite a few years ago. And um, the third person is a, a new up-and-comer from the Allentown area, Stephanie Johnson, who's amazing. And then the last show we got planned for the summer is um, we're going back to the Rusty Nail July 21st and doing a, a big metal night. Uh, we have four bands again. We have um, Siberia. Uh, Crown of Earth, both from the Philadelphia area, and we got two bands that are coming on tour from down south. One is called Dead Rights, and the other is called Dead Reckoning. So uh, we've gone into the world of entertainment promotions, and then the, the last real big thing we've done, and I'm kind of pissed, I thought I had a magazine with me, and I don't. Um, we started a magazine. We're going to be doing a, a quarterly actual physical magazine of pages, and I'm really pissed I didn't have a copy with me. I thought I had one in my car. Um, but it's free. It's, uh, it's available at a whole bunch of locations throughout the Philadelphia area right now. Um, and it's it's totally driven. It's our totally driven world now in print where we discuss music, TV, movies, comic books, wrestling, uh, sports. I mean, it covers all the bases of, uh, of our totally driven world now in print. And um, it's been it's been huge. A lot of people are loving it. Um, people are picking it up. If you have picked up a copy, uh, I've been begging people to uh, take a selfie of it and tag us in it. Uh, we have a bunch of selfies up on our uh, Facebook page that people have been doing with the uh, with the magazine. Um, and also, I've been going out to uh, to shows. I'll be out tonight at a show in the Philadelphia area, and I'll have a couple copies of the magazine, and I'll be asking people to take pictures, and I'll be pestering people and being a pain in the ass to everybody. But um, for more information on all that stuff, uh, go to TillyGermanEntertainment.com, check out our website. Uh, you can look up all of our social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tilly German Entertainment, Tilly German Radio, or myself, Bay Ragney. And reminds me, Keith, uh, message me over your address so I can send you out a magazine uh, because they're almost all gone. <laughs> I only have about 30 copies left and I have a few copies I have to mail out to people uh, you just been added to the mail list and uh, they're becoming very sparse so <laughs> before they're gone let me send you out a copy no absolutely I look forward to it the last question I was going to ask you on the subject was how did you start your magazine, com uh, magazine and who do you work with because I was very interested in going in that direction, but I have no idea who to work with. Uh, honestly, myself. <laughs> I, 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 a lot of uh, the people who are part of Totally Driven, the world of Totally Driven Entertainment, um, they stepped up and wrote articles. Uh, I wrote a few articles. My wife writes some articles. Um, and I just, I worked on it and uh, I laid it out and sent it out to a printer and actually very scary um, 
I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I sent it out to the printer. Uh, I dealt with a printer online that was recommended to me. Um, when the boxes showed up in my house a couple weeks later, and we opened the boxes up, I, I no bullshit, I was floored. I cannot believe the quality of this magazine, how um, colorful, thick, glossy. It, it's an amazing, and, and I'm really, this is one of my, I guess, proudest things I've really done with the whole world of Totally Driven because it's one thing like, you know, where we can sit here and do this interview and talk and have a conversation, but to be able to physically pick up and hold something in your hands, it just took it not only to a whole new level for myself, but I see it on the faces of the people who have been picking up copies as well. It, it, it kind of, like I've explained to people um, in our Totally Driven family, it, it kind of made things real for everybody now. To where you're seeing they like, hey, this is a real thing and we can hold a piece of it now. So I think it really elevated us to another level. No, absolutely. Now, was there anything you wanted to ask me or anything you wanted to talk about? That, you know, the one thing you, which, uh, you know, like your whole point of, I, I guess, doing the show, your show, and and starting this and all was to, to, to put it out there that, A, yes, you do have a learning disability, but that you can – function and be like anybody else and, and and do exactly what other people do. I mean nothing for nothing. You do what I what I do, but you do it on video. Right. <laughs> so you you you've taken it even a step further. Um, do you get a lot of people who actually put you down or uh, I, I guess it, uh, like the big term of, of the modern era is is bully. Do you get like a lot of people who try to bully you because you are, quote-unquote, have a learning disability? Oh, well, I won't mention names. <laughs> but there are I, don't, I don't want to hear no names, but... <laughs> but um, some people would say to me, yeah, you're doing a good thing, but how exactly... You know, yeah, i give you an example. I talk to my dad a lot, and he okay. says, um, it's, okay, it's good what you're doing, but it's just a hobby, and it, it drives me crazy. It's like, because I'm trying to turn it into something, it's not just a, yes, okay, it's a hobby. I'm trying to turn it into something. But sure. he said to me recently, and it got me thinking, that's why I asked you when we took the break, is, you know, you're doing your show, but how is that supposed to help people out there with disabilities? And I stopped and I thought about it, like, huh, that's a good question. I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> but it's basically, I'm just turning myself into an example of saying, no, I was hate labeled, handicapped, mentally disturbed, learning disabled, retarded, or what they say in hangover, retard. But, <laughs> but, but um, I'm just saying whatever you, you want to throw at me, I'm going to throw back at you and say, just because you think I'm that doesn't mean it's going to dictate who I am and who I'm going to be. Right. And it's not going to dictate you know, who or how I'm going to live. And like it in my saying, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even if I have a word in disability, I can still overcome. I keep changing it. Basically, the point of it is I'm showing people a disability I can still amount to something. At the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of word and disabilities and disabilities. But you should never give up and you should prove people wrong. And that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. And you should prove to them you can stem out to something. So that being said, it's about saying that you can throw labels at someone, but you should prove to them that label is not going to dictate who you are and who you're going to be. Right. Well, I, I, I guess you can say, like, one thing you're really doing is um, well, some kind of like what a lot of organizations do nowadays, whether whatever the um, the cause may be, but you're raising awareness. Yeah. You're raising awareness that um, just because you do have this disability, you can uh, be just like anybody else. No, absolutely. 
It's so it's it's basically if you're in a wheelchair, that doesn't say okay, you're just someone in a wheelchair. I interview people who are in wheelchairs who are actors. I interview right. someone who has Sarah Palsy, but he's a filmmaker. Okay. Uh, and there's I interview people just in general, and that's another thing that people say. Do you just interview handicapped people? And it's like, no, you're an idiot if you say it like that. I interview everyone and everyone, West wrestlers, actors, actresses, models, people with disabilities, people, people without disabilities. I need to interview everyone and everyone. And the whole point of that is I'm showing the labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. And it, you know what? It's, it's hard to say. Uh, you know, you said when you saw me, you know, I, I do put a good mask on. I do hide it. But there are parts of when I do show my disability. And I try my best to hide it because I mm -hmm. try to hold myself to a higher extender, extended, extend, whatever the hell the word is, standard. And it's basically, I don't want that. To defy me. Yes, I have a disability, but I don't want to be remembered as, hey, you're the handicapped kid who has a talk show. No, right. I'm a kid with a disability who has a talk show. So it's basically all these different things out there that says, hashtag break the labels. I like that. Good stuff. Now, we're going to wrap up our interview segment, but the last thing I do want to ask you, going on the record, when I first approached you, to be a guest on my talk show. What was your honest opinion? And after being a guest on my show now, how do you feel now? And do you have any second thoughts? Um, I thought you were grabbing a beer there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you asked me to be on it this time, I mean, any time you've asked me, I think this might be like the third or fourth time I've done your show. Uh, I, I'm honored to do your show. I'm honored. I... Whenever I get asked to do anybody's show, it's it's an honor. It truly is, and I always enjoy talking with you. I mean, we always have great conversations. And before we went live, I was just I was kind of like, uh, uh, and then we get on here and you know we start babbling away. And I mean, if I didn't have to hop off and go tape an interview myself, I <laughs> say you know we could end up sitting here all afternoon bullshit. So, but it's always a pleasure, always an honor, Keith. No, absolutely. Now, wrapping up your interview segment, I do have a couple with one or two questions for you off the air. But wrapping up, it's a real honor to have heavy back as a, as a guest, as a friend, and I'm looking forward to the next steps into the future and having you back on the show. Thank you. You too.